Hey everyone, this is Hugh from Plaguelands Media bringing you uh, another book review. Uh, this time a book that I actually purchased accidentally. Now I'm a huge fan of the Alien franchise. Um, although there are some films in the series that are not as good as others. Um, that really doesn't matter to me. I loved Prometheus. I thought Alien Covenant uh, although it copped a lot of shit, I thought it was a fantastic movie. And if you actually break down that film, the first act uh, seems to follow the same structure as Alien, and then the second act is Aliens, and then Alien 3 and um, Alien Resurrection. I even love the Alien vs. Predator films. I really don't care what, uh, what people say about them. So I was really kind of overjoyed when I found this. Now this isn't a novelization of the Alien 3 that you all know and love with the prison complex and um, you know a dead Hicks and a dead Newt at the beginning of the film and the Ripley clone and all that other stuff. Um, this is actually a novelization of an unproduced first draft screenplay by the science fiction author William Gibson, the uh, man who brought you Neuromancer, um, Johnny Mnemonic, and a whole lot of other great cyberpunk style fiction. So he actually wrote uh, a screenplay for Alien 3. It was never produced. And he gave that screenplay many, many, many years later to Pat Cadigan. Uh, who's a science fiction author that I wasn't actually familiar with. I've never read any of her work. And uh, she turned it into this book. So let's get started with another episode of... The first thing I want to talk about is the color of the cover. It's a sickly green uh, cover. The picture of the alien is actually really decent, but I hate this color. Um, when I purchased this, I thought I was actually getting a copy of the screenplay itself. Didn't realize it was a novelization. I was a little disappointed when it arrived, but I read it and I have to say, it's fucking fantastic. Now, there are some huge differences. Uh, I'm not gonna spoil the whole plot with you. I'll just go over some things that I noted. The main difference being uh, Ripley isn't the main character in this story. Uh, her character doesn't actually appear. Her character stays in stasis the entire time before um, being shipped off of uh, the space station that the book is set on. Um, and we never actually uh, hear from her. So basically the setup is uh, the Saluko is going through space. You might remember at the end of Aliens, um, Hicks, Newt and Ripley kind of escaped. The big queen alien um, was there and gets, you know, blasted out and blah, blah, blah. Now the, the Saluko basically uh, is traveling through through space and uh, enters uh, kind of an unrestricted area where these colonists live that don't really um, have anything to do with the intergalactic government, whatever. And so they climb aboard um, and they discover the remains of Bishop, the um, synthetic android with uh, an alien egg kind of in his guts, you might remember that he does actually have some flesh parts to him. So these aliens have kind of evolved and they're using uh, Bishop to incubate this egg. Uh, so these two uh, colonists kind of discover this. The egg opens, one of them gets hit with the face hugger. Um, the, the other one, the, uh, this woman, uh, Rosetti, I think was her name. Uh, probably not. But she manages to um, basically blast the facehugger guy out of the airlock and takes the remains of Bishop, at least the top half of Bishop, 
and gets off the Seleuco before the Seleuco moves through to um, uh, to regular kind of government controlled space. Where it comes to uh, Anchor Point, a giant space station with colonists and all kinds of great stuff. And here's where we get uh, a lot of the main characters. We get some scientists, we get the uh, people that work in ops. But the key players in this story, well, the key player, I should say, is Hicks, the, um, the guy that survived, the Marine that survived aliens. Newt is in it for a small part of the story, but then Newt gets kind of shipped off the space station and Hicks really becomes the focus because he's the one that's fought the aliens before. And then Hicks has to kind of help the colonists escape. Bishop comes back into it. Um, and we discover that the aliens uh, are adapting now and kind of where before it was the, the face hugger kind of put the chest burst in the stomach and the chest burst comes out. Um, they have that still, but this time it's multiple chest bursters and they don't just come out of the... Uh, of the chest uh, in one scene they come out of a guy's leg um but also um there's like uh when the alien dies they release kind of a mist and that mist can infect people as well which i think is one of the best parts of this book is the fact that um they have changed now the alien has kind of evolved where it doesn't burst out of someone but it kind of grows from the inside and then that person's skin rips off to reveal the alien head um kind of coming out which is, is a really cool scene the aliens inflect some lemurs and you get little lemur aliens uh at one point very much like the dog alien i believe that was in um alien 3 the actual film and then we have this really tense kind of fight for survival um, with Hicks trying to lead um, a group of people to the escape pods and Bishop um, trying to set off a bomb in the uh, space station to blow all the aliens up. And, uh, and it gets kind of some really great set pieces. If it had been made into a movie, it would have been way expensive for the time, but some of the set pieces would have been really, really cool. I think as an alien novel it's great even though it's not canon with the uh, movies or any of the other books in the alien franchise i really enjoyed uh this different interpretation of it and how we can see hicks character kind of evolving and how a lot of the alien um species evolved as well and there's actually some references to the black uh, kind of the black gunk we saw in Prometheus and Alien Covenant, which might have been in the original screenplay, might not, but um, was a really nice little addition, I thought, uh, to the Alien franchise. So if you love aliens, like reading books, this is a really great story. Um, I would very much like to get my hands on a copy of the screenplay to see um what it was like but this well worth a read alien 3 the unproduced first draft screenplay by william gibson novelization by pat cadigan so check it out thanks for watching if you liked this video hit like if you haven't subscribed hit subscribe uh follow us on facebook amazon you know it's coming in the next slide but uh yeah until then, until the next video, just read a fucking book, people.